So think like a fish and act like a bug. When you cut right down to the essence of it, that's what fly fishing is all about. That's what this course is all about. If we can learn to think like a fish thinks, which basically is where do they live, what do they eat, how do they like to eat it, then we can figure out how to act like the food that is fish food or bugs. So if we can think like a fish, we'll know where the fish are. And if we, can act, if we know what they like to eat, then we can become the bug, which is uh, their fish food. So how do fish think? What, what's going on in that little rice-sized brain of theirs? Well, first of all, they want to get the most amount of energy, calories, proteins, however you want to say it, the most amount of food for the least amount of effort. So they'll eat what there is the most of. Fish are predators. They hunt by sight. They can see colors. They know what their food looks like. They know what size it is, what shape it is, what color it is, and they know how it acts. So hunt by sight, but they eat by smell. Well, by definition, fly fishing doesn't have any smell or taste to the flies that we use. That's cheating. That's like kicking your golf ball out of the rough onto the, onto the fairway. I mean, it's not done. So in fly fishing, we use artificial flies to look like and to act like their natural food. So how do we put all this together to find out where the fish are? Well, in a little while, we're going to go out to a river and we're going to look at the places where uh, fish like to hang out and we're going to look at the aquatic insects that uh, that, they, that we use to match uh, the, uh, the flies to match the aquatic insects. But think about the overall process. The baseline of fishing is habitat. If you find the good habitat, you're going to find where the fish are hanging out. Okay, we already said when we went through the, uh, the rule book that one good place to find really good habitat is look in the rule book for special regulations water because the fishery biologists have done all the work. They've done the temperature sensing, the um, electroshocking to find out where those uh, fish are. Dan and I have uh, at various times gone out with those biologists and done that electroshocking and done the water testing analysis. So the baseline of habitat has to do with number one, water quality. It has to have enough dissolved oxygen to meet the needs of that particular species. Trout are a cold water species. They like water that is between 55 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Their sweet spot is about 58, 59 degrees. If it gets much down below 50, they're not going to be eating. And if it gets down to 40, they're going to be hibernating. So their sweet spot, 55 to 65 degrees. Once the temperature gets up to about 70 degrees, then the trout will pretty much shut down their feeding. On the other hand, that's when bass start to take over. So if you're in water that has both bass and trout, around 70 degrees, you're liable to start catching uh, more bass. So number one, habitat. Water temperature, water quality, dissolved oxygen. Now we're going to be looking for that on the stream. Second thing has to do with protection. Fish are not going to eat, and we're not going to be able to fool them if they feel threatened. Well, what are they going to be threatened by? Predators. What are their major predators? Birds, eagles, ospreys, kingfishers, merganser fish-eating ducks in ponds and lakes, loons. So there's lots of things. Uh, in some cases, even eagles will be the predators uh, for fish. Uh, herons, there's all kinds of things that would love to eat a fish. They know that. The ones that uh, ignore that got taken out of the gene pool a couple million, 20 million years ago. So the ones that have survived, they know uh, instinctively, don't get eaten, <laughs> okay? So get protection from predators. The second thing they need protection from is current because once again, they need the current to bring them oxygen and they need to bring them food, but if they have to swim harder to maintain a position than the amount of energy they're getting from their food, they're going to slowly starve to death. 
So what do they want to do? They want to be near the faster current, bringing them the oxygen and the food, but have a refuge where they'll be able to, to rest, like behind a boulder, current seams, all these things we're going to be talking about later on when we go out on the river. And when, you, when you're on the river with us practicing, these are the things that we're going to be looking for. So protection from uh, predators, protection from current. How do you get protection from predators? Things like boulders, overhanging vegetation. Uh, if there's, they have a choice between shade and sun, they'll take the shade every time because they're less visible to predators. Shallow and deep. If there's a, if they're a choice to be in a little bit deeper water rather than shallow water, normally they'll stay in that little bit deeper water. They'll go into the shallow water if there's a preponderance of food there, but they're usually not going to stay there uh, if there's deeper water available once that food source is, uh, has gone down. Protection from current, some of the same things that protection from predators. Boulders, trees, overhanging uh, vegetation, uh, a riffled surface. So if you see a rapids going into a pool where the uh, rapids hits that pool, they have a riffled surface. Uh, things like foam lines, where when we go out on the water looking at aquatic insects, we'll, we'll see foam lines. Those are good places to look. So number one, habitat. Number two, protection from predators. Visibility, maybe deeper water where they're not as visible down deeper from uh, predators. The next thing we look for is food because the, if they don't eat, they're not going to survive. So what are the different types of things that fish eat? Well, we're going to go out on the water and look at uh, aquatic insects, caddis, mayflies, and stoneflies. But in order for us to understand not only what is their primary food source, we need to understand that food source well enough to know at what time of the year and what time of day is that particular food source going to be available. And we're going to be talking about that a lot on the day of uh, the trip with us. Uh, so uh, out on the water, the on-stream lesson. But uh, let's just say that knowing the uh, life cycle of the insects is going to help you a great deal. It'll tell us things like, uh, are we going to fish a dry fly which imitates a mature insect? Are we going to uh, imitate an immature insect? You know, at what stage of the life cycle is the food likely to be? And those are some of the things that you'll see later on in this video, and those are things that we're going to reinforce with the, um, the on-stream lesson. So understand the food sources. I mentioned the aquatic insects. Well, there are also things that we call terrestrials. So we're not going to be covering that on, on the stream because we're going to be doing aquatic insects. But terrestrials are things that are insects that live on land that might fall into the water. And those things might be things like grasshoppers in the summertime. There's things like ants, flying ants. And they're probably very small for you to be able to see. But if you can think about what are the types of uh, insects that might be around uh, streams, the uh, ants, grasshoppers, beetles, uh, those types of things. Um, also, aside from insects, good fish food is bigger pieces of protein. And what are those bigger pieces of protein? They could be things like leeches, they can be things like little fish, they can be things like crayfish. So we have flies. For instance, this one is what I call my woolly daddy, which is a a cross between a uh, woolly bugger and a crawdad. So this is a crawdad fly. It has weight to it, so it'll be on the bottom hopping along. And we'll uh, teach you how to fish the streamer technique, which will imitate a crawfish. It'll imitate a leech, like this purple one, or this black one, or an olive-colored one. Some of them have uh, a weight at attached to them, like this little uh, cone head. Others will have a, uh, a little dumbbell eyes, and some of them will imitate baby fish. So when we looked at the, um, uh, at the various uh, fish identification on page 34 and 35 of the rule book, we saw brook trout. And one of the de defining characteristics of the brook trout has to do with that yellowish orangish color on their belly. So this is a fly which uh, is called a Mickey Finn which is to imitate a little brook trout. This is called a, uh, a yellow marabou muddler minnow. It also is intended to imitate a small bait fish. Could be a uh, brook trout, could be a uh, shiner, something like that. 
And then this fly, also a streamer fly, is called a black ghost, and it is intended to imitate a smelt that we also saw on page 34 when we talked about cold water species. In the column next to it is the, uh, the smelt, and this is a very popular fly in places like Lake Winnipesaukee or if you're fishing in rivers up in Maine where uh, landlocked salmon run up into the rivers in the springtime following the smelt run. This is a great fly to use. So these are streamers, and streamers imitate little fish, uh, crayfish, something that is bigger that moves in the water. And um, we talked about knowing the life cycle of aquatic insects. So a mature insect or a terrestrial that is caught on the surface film will float on top, and that's a dry fly. An immature insect, uh, such as a nymph or a larva, will float near the bottom and fish will be, it'll be just drifting with the current. And finally, we have the, uh, the streamer which will be swimming around and we're going to, to cover on our on-stream session dry fly fishing, imitating Im Im uh, mature insects, nymph fishing which will uh, teach us how to dead drift a, uh, a immature insect that can't swim, and then finally how to actively fish a streamer which is imitating a little bait fish. So think like a fish, act like a bug. These are the basic tenets. Habitat, protection, life cycle of the food that we're, that we're imitating, and then what presentation, dry fly, nymph, or streamer. So see you out on the water.